you know, early in the year, just throwing a frog around or something horizontal, a moving bait that you can cover a little bit of water with, oftentimes is gonna help you a lot in finding where those fish are located. Early in the mornings, it's nice because they seem to be a little more aggressive and they'll come a little farther for the bait and you can usually fish a little bit faster and kind of get them narrowed down. We've been having a lot of fish come up on the frog this morning, not quite eating it the way they should or they usually do this time of year. But we, what we can do is we locate those fish. We can see where they're moving from, what they're doing, what they're coming to, and we can go back in there and maybe try a flipping presentation or dropping it in on them style bait and get them to bite that way. They might just not be committing on the frog today. All right, well, let's tie on the flipping rig. We don't need to beat around the bush. Coming back through after frogging, throwing the flipping bait we were just talking about, you can pick up a little bit more quality fish, like this one here. Hopefully we can get a few more. You know, most often when we talk North Country bass fishing here in, in Northern Minnesota, a lot of people think we have a lot of smallmouth fishing, rock, um, deep natural lakes, when really we have a ton of weed vegetation here as, as far as emergent, submergent. You know, um, from cabbage to mats like this here, uh, I really like looking for the mats myself personally. But uh, the weed cover in Minnesota is a ton and picking it apart and being good at picking it apart is definitely going to help you catch more bass up in this part of the country. Because it's not just uh, barren, you know, rock and sandy shores. We, we have a ton of aquatic vegetation. You know, my favorite way to fish the, the shallow cover up here is definitely pitching and flipping. I really like looking for the matted stuff. It seems to, to hold fish really consistently, but the, even the, the standing rice or standing pencil reeds, are, are, they're great ways to catch them up here. I like throwing the three quarter ounce weight. It can get through pretty much anything and it doesn't have too fast of a fall speed, where if I, I find some sparse cover, I can still flip this in there and have confidence that uh, it's, it's gonna catch them. Pulling up on some of these grass beds can be really intimidating because there's a ton of water here to cover. When you approach a grass bed, the first thing I like to do is start on an edge because bass are going to use these edges as ambush points. You know, to start on the hard outside edge, inside edge, if there's a hole right there, but concentrate on those edges and, and fish there and work your way in. You can catch the outside fish first and you won't disturb the inside fish. Plus, you'll get a good idea as to what they're sitting on. You know, if there's lily pads coming through the mats, they might be sitting on the pad stems down on the bottom. If you see some pieces of wood sticking through, some cattails, some cane, anything else of different cover to flip at, you're looking for those odd things, uh, the subtleties, holes in the mat or the thicker parts of the mat, and to slowly pick apart the cover, and you'll start to figure out a pattern. Those fish should be sitting in those same areas throughout the whole spot. So as you can see, we're pulling up to the edge of this mat here, and it's kind of tapered out front. And most likely what we're gonna see here is there's probably a bottom change along this hard edge coming up. And that's what those bass are gonna position themselves on, you know, a nice ambush point where they're gonna have a good opportunity to, to get something to come by they can eat. So this is kind of what we're looking for when we're fishing these heavy mats is something a little bit different. As the weeds change here, what that often tells us is that there's a change of something in the bottom. If it's going from hard to soft or soft to hard, there's different bottom composition all over under these mats. And the fish are going to sit on those transitions. And this right here on the top of the surface of the water is a good indicator as to what's happening on the bottom. <laughs> Always a fun surprise in northern Minnesota here. Gotta watch out for these toothy critters. Nice bonus fish though. Definitely make sure to check your line after an encounter with one of them. All those teeth can definitely end a, a nice bite awfully quick. In parts of these mats, you can see the, the vegetation, the grass here is growing right up into the mat and it's not a big hollow opening underneath there. It can be good at times, but for the most part, you're looking for the big open holes with a canopy over the top with no weed cover on the bottom. They're looking for an open area with a ton of shade and that overhanging cover that's gonna make them feel safe. If 
we got back into an area here where it looks like the canopy got a little bit clearer underneath and right away we got bit. It didn't take long. You know, it's not quite the size we're looking for. Still a nice fish, a fun sporty one. But I assume, I suspect, there's probably gonna be a couple more of them along this straight edge here again. Every time I catch a fish in a mat, I definitely like to make a waypoint. That way we can come back, you know, things will change, the wind can shift the mat around, and we can still know about where that fish was located. Because even under this thick cover, they will school up. Just like we were thinking here along this edge, we marked that waypoint. Coming back through, there were more fish here located with them, sitting under these mats. I have a 7.3 Heavy 13 Fishing Omen. Um, I like this rod, it's very affordable for the price. It's sensitive, really lightweight, and it's got plenty of backbone to help me pull those fish out of the cover. Like I was saying, I like a little bit longer rod, something longer than seven feet. This gives you a little more leverage on the fish, fast gear ratio reel, that way you can pick up the line if they do happen to come at you at the boat, heavy braid. Um, in this application, you know, you don't need anything but a heavy braided line. You're flipping it into thick cover. The fish aren't gonna shy away from seeing your line at all. My go-to flipping rig consists of a rubber stop here. VMC happens to make this one. I like a three quarter ounce weight for most of the applications in this part of the country. Um, a five aught hook here, again, a VMC heavy duty flipping hook. It's got plenty of gap in here. It's a good stout hook. You're not bending it and I'm running all this on 65 pound braid, suffix 832. I use the five odd hook to hold a big chunk of plastic. Um, I can vary from bigger sizes, smaller sizes on the hook, but the three quarter ounce weight, that rubber stop, the 65 pound braid, and the five odd hook are definitely the way to go. You're not gonna be losing any fish. And make sure you keep your stop all the way butted up to your weight there. That's gonna help you penetrate these mats and get through them quickly with the least amount of resistance. That's a big one. Oh, there we go. Again, flipping in these mats, you never know what you're gonna tangle with. I really like using the seven foot three rod here. Anything over seven feet is gonna help you out a ton. Um, I have a high speed gear ratio reel here, 8.1 to one. It helps me get to pick up the line if they start coming at me in the heavy cover. You know, a big fish like this can pick up a ton of line on you quickly charging the boat. Um, you know, northern bass fishing here, we have a heck of a lot of good smallmouth and largemouth bass fishing. A lot of emergent cover here. You can come up, fish them pretty much any way you want. We, you can fish them deep, you can fish them shallow. There's a plentiful population of fish and some really nice ones, you know, up to six pounds easily like this here. 